seek him here, they seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? That cursed, elusive Pimpernel. When I agreed to come and take a dish of tea with the dear Duchess, I had not the least idea you were to be present, Sir Percy. What have you been doing all the week, Blakeney? Amusing yourself in the country? There's nothing amusing about the country. Court, sir, is the only place where one amuses oneself. Mm. Blood, Sir Percy. You should argue that with Monsieur Rothstein. There's a man who never goes to court if he can avoid it. Monsieur Rothstein? Isn't he a banker? He is indeed. He positively reeks of money. <laughs> a most alluring perfume, madam. When did he come to England? Well, about a year ago. He's staying here at Northumberland House with the Duchess. She says he spends most of his time just sitting alone, staring in front of him. Yeah. She says he's ill. She calls it melancholia. But you know, I wonder if... You wonder? I wonder... For well, no matter. Uh, you wonder if he really is the Baron Rothstein? Ah, sir, you're a veritable mind reader. <laughs> you see, I heard Mr. Rothstein to be vastly sociable one for the gay life and uh, all that. And uh, in these days of forged credentials... Yes, but surely the Duchess must know if he's authentic or not. The dear Duchess is even more in debt than uh, some others I could mention. So perhaps... Oh. Right. May I present to Monsieur Rothstein, Sir Percy Blakeney, Sir Andrew Fuchs. Sir. An honor. Uh, Lady Snatterswaite was just telling me that you are not in the best of health, sir. Alas, no. Not in very good health. Ill, sir. Very ill. If you will please excuse me, my dear Duchess, I... I feel suddenly faint. Of course. Cynthia, dearest. Quite a man of mystery, your guest, Duchess. He is ill, Sir Percy, with some disease of mystery. He just sits all day long. He does nothing, he sees no one, except those messengers from France. Uh, messengers from France? Hmm. About every two weeks, a messenger, a Frenchman, comes to see him. They're closeted together for about an hour, then the messenger leaves, and Monsieur Rothstein just goes on sitting. Have I'd be content to go on sitting forever if I could hatch out such golden eggs. Wouldn't you, Duchess? Another dish of tea, Lady Snatterthwaite. With pleasure. Uh, you were saying messengers from France. Is Rochelle. Speak, can't you? All is well, citizen. Have no fear. No fear. My daughter's in the hands of Chauvelin. Tell citizen Chauvelin, as strange as it may seem, I am still alive. Yes, citizen. How much is he asking for this time? The usual amount. For how many months and years will he go on asking for the usual amount? Until I'm dead, I suppose. I suppose so, <sighs> If only we had come together. If only my daughter had not insisted on waiting in Paris. <laughs> Tell your master that if he sets my daughter free, not only is my whole fortune his, but I will deliver myself into his hands to do with as he wishes. Very well, citizen. I'll, I'll make out the draft. 
The other men who've been here have granted me a small service. They've taken a letter to my daughter. Will you do likewise? Yes, citizen. The usual amount. I keep on writing letters, but I've never had a reply. Take comfort, citizen. It is my belief that your daughter is well. How so? So long as you have the money, she is of more use to citizen Chauvelin alive than dead. Dead? There are many kinds of death. My spirit is dying. Pray God, as is not dying too. Well, Gaston Lou, Citizen Joubert. Ah, yes, one of my Lieutenant Joubert's agents. Eh? Well, why do you come to me? Citizen Joubert is away. True, true. It was urgent. Oh, oh Citizen, your foot. Oh, do not speak of it. I... No, sit down, sit down. First. I have a draft for you. <laughs> Rothstein is certainly proving a gold mine to us. What next? Excuse me, citizen, but do you expect to get money from the old man for some time to come? <laughs> <laughs> for years and years. Until the coffers are empty and the drafts, as one might say, are dry. <laughs> I see, but... Well? He is looking very frail. If he were to die... Die? Nonsense. He cannot die until we have all the money. They do not expect him to last very long unless... Unless what? Unless he has news of his daughter. These cursed aristos. The girl is ill now. It would be a pity if either one of them were to die before their money came into the hands of the glorious Republic. I have already arranged that my own doctor shall visit her. Might it not be an idea, citizen? If I were to go with the doctor, then I could get a certificate from him and take it back to the old man in London. Nobody is going to know where the citizeness Rothstein is except me and my trusted doctor. Ah. I shall go with him on his next visit. Then on the journey, he can observe the symptoms of my illness. Your illness. It is hard to believe that citizen Chauvelin is in need of a doctor. That just shows how little you know. Because I present a smiling face to the world, nobody knows my suffering. Because no word of complaint ever passes my lips, nobody dreams the agonies I suffer. Look at this. Citizen, you must be in torment. I am in torment. Dr. Dufay says that that is the worst case of gout he has ever come across in the whole of his experience. I have not slept for weeks. If it were not for my duty to the country... My heart bleeds for you, citizen. Such an undemocratic disease, too. <laughs> Thank you for... for being so prompt in coming to see me, Gaston Delon. I shall not forget you. Agonies, I suffer. You are in agony, sir? I have not slept for weeks, Doctor. But where is the pain? Here. And here? No, here. Oh. And my left toe is in absolute torment. With my soul. Well, I'm afraid I haven't time to go into your case thoroughly now. Oh. However, I will give you one dose of laudanum. Laudanum. Mm. This will dull your pain and allow you to sleep. I shall be back in Paris in two weeks' time. Perhaps you will be kind enough to come and see me then. 
I will, Doctor. I will. That is, if I am still alive. Oh. What a beautiful view you have of the guillotine out of the window. What's that? Oh, sir, the draught. The draught. The nightmare. Most dangerous. Most dangerous. Now, sir. Do you know, I believe there is something the matter with your circulation. My circulation? Hmm. I should recommend you, sir, to take more exercise. Oh, good night, sir. Good night. Come in, come in. Forgive me for troubling you, citizen. But what you told me last night about your suffering, I could not get it out of my head. I was so impressed by your courage. Yes, my courage. Because you keep a smiling face to the world. No one knows what you suffer. Because no word of complaint ever passes your lips. No one even imagines the agonies you go through. That is true. That is true. Citizen, I entreat you. Before you go to visit the citizeness Rothstein, try my grandmother's recipe. Uh, yeah, yes, perhaps I will. But a little later, a little later. Now I must go and hurry to meet Dr. Dufay. Citizen, I entreat you. If not for your sake, then for the sake of France. Uh, yes, yes, perhaps, but... Some other time, some other time. Ah, that is what my grandfather said. And then, some other time, he was dead. Does it taste very bad? My grandmother was a wise woman. Her portions tasted like nectar. You are too public-spirited, citizen. A little less thought for others, a little more for yourself, would be beneficial to your health. Duty, citizen, is a stern mistress. I cannot help thinking of the time, citizen, when there will be a statue erected to you in every marketplace in France as saviour of your people. Little children will learn about you at their mother's knee and be awed at the history of so great a man. More? It is imperative, citizen, that you take care of your health. It's very strong. You need strength, citizen, to combat the torments in your foot. <laughs> Just one more, citizen, and you will feel no pain anymore. If only I could sleep. If only you would, I mean could. <laughs> there is nothing more pleasant. There is nothing more pleasant? There is nothing more pleasant than to sit on a warm summer afternoon. On a warm summer afternoon. The draft for the usual amount. Sweet dreams, citizen. Our friend Dr. Dufay must be heading to the next village. That will be about half a mile around the bend of the road. Well, this is the place to head him off then. Come on, Nash. Oh, oh, oh. Have them watered? of your best burgundy. Yes, madam. Well, our friend should be here any minute now. Yes. You know, my dear Andrew, there is nothing more pleasant than to sit, sit on, on a warm summer's summer afternoon. This will be 
Ja, Ferdinand. Why, it is the citizen doctor. Oh, my dear Dr. Duty. My, oh, oh, my dear Dr. Duty. Oh, what a pleasure. Uh, may I introduce my very good friend, uh, Lord Tom Dokes. Oh, Dr. Duty. Uh, my dear doctor, you must join us. My dear doctor. Yes, oh, come my along, doctor. Who would have thought Sit I would down. have met you here? Landlord! 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 You see, doctor, I have taken your advice. I have taken exercise. <laughs> I feel a new man already. <laughs> you will join us in a glass, won't you? Oh, come now, doctor. You must be thirsty after your long ride. You are most kind. It's still quite early. Yeah. It would give me great pleasure to join you. Ah, you have not far to go, have you? No, no, no. Only to the chateau in the next village. Ah, right. yeah. uh, another bottle and another glass. Very good, oh, No, no. Wait, wait, wait. We are drinking a 1780 vintage. Yeah, a little flat, don't you agree, my dear Lord Tom? Yes, I think it has lost a little bit of sparkle. Ah, we must have sparkle for Dr. Dufay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hardly think I, I could drink a, a whole bottle. Oh, <laughs> nonsense, you never know what you can do until you try, Doctor. <laughs> Our friend certainly seems remarkably restored. And it's all due to you, Doctor. Ah, well, uh, the dose of laudanum should just about complete the cure. Remarkable stuff, laudanum. Oh, yeah. I don't know what we doctors should do without it. I've seen it have the most extraordinary effects on all sorts of people. And so have I. <laughs> now, I have chosen for you the 1788 vintage. It is quite unimportant, but uh, amusing in its rustic way. To the people of France. The people, people of, of France. France. Oh. 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 Delicious. <laughs> Not quite so ripe, perhaps, as the 1789, but... <sighs> Definitely palatable. The ladies. The ladies. God bless them. Mm. You know, I've never seen a man recover so quickly. You're a remarkable doctor, citizen doctor. Sir. The secret of diagnosis, sir, is to comprehend the inner workings of a patient's mind. Yeah. Now, our friend here is by nature soft. Mm. Bovine. Fatuous. <laughs> Ergo, his body deteriorates. <laughs> A little exercise, the cure is complete. Yeah. Now, citizen Chauvelin. Ah, citizen Chauvelin. Ah, citizen Chauvelin. Citizen Chauvelin. Mm. Mm. <laughs> now, uh, a toast uh, from you, citizen doctor. Oh, from you. <laughs> <laughs> Our friends across the channel. Ah. Oh, <laughs> Our friends across the channel. Across across the channel. channel. Um, you were saying, um, Citizen Chauvelin. Hey, oh, yeah. Citizen Chauvelin, his illness, all imagination. And the cause, the, the inner workings of his mind? Bad conscience. Oh, what am I saying? Uh. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> all illness is imaginary. Yeah. That, that's what we doctors live on. <laughs> People believe what they want to believe. All men had imagination. Uh, to imagination. Imagination. There is nothing more pleasant, Citizen Doctor. Nothing. Oh, Citizen Doctor. Oh, God. <laughs> what do you say? I said there was nothing more pleasant. Nothing more pleasant. Than to sit. On a warm summer's afternoon. Warm. Drinking the good wine of France. <laughs> the good lord of Dr. Dufay. Uh, one dose shouldn't have put him out like that. One dose? My dear Lord Tom, he's had half the bottle. <laughs> this way, Doctor. Citizen Chauvelin is very concerned about Citizeness Rothstein's health. I only hope I am in time. Wait for me here, apothecary. Citizeness. Citizeness Rothstein. I come from Citizen Chauvelin. He is most concerned about your health. That is a lie. 
Show me your tongue. May I feel your pulse? If you insist, I can scarcely prevent you. Imposter! What are you doing in here? Oh. Kindly leave the room and I shall call the guard! No, no, no. Calm yourself, my dear mademoiselle. Calm yourself and hear what I prescribe. What you prescribe? I know the way a proper doctor feels a pulse. And you're no doctor! Oh. I know that! And you're no invalid. I know that. Now, will you listen to me? I prescribe for you an enlarged and an immediate dose of fresh air. Now... Who are you? Why have you come here? Never mind who I am. I bring you a letter from your father. There is no time to read it now. Do exactly as I say. And I promise to you that I will have you out of here within three minutes. But you must do exactly as I say. Do you trust me? Trust you? Yes, I trust you. For I think I know who you are. Now put on his wig and these. Apothecary? Apothecary? The apothecary is my companion and very good friend. Get down. And it will be his pleasurable duty to accompany you to safety. Are you, uh, are you a tall girl? Not very. Oh, that is a pity. But what did the doctor say? People believe what they want to believe. When you and he go out of here, they will expect to see a doctor and an apothecary. And a doctor and an apothecary is what they will see. Just remember one thing. Leave all the talking to him. Now, take both the horses. Right. Tie up mine in the spinney at the bottom of the drive. The chestnut will carry you both. Ride as hard as you can. I will follow you as soon as possible. Good. But you, if they should find you here... If they should come in, they will expect to find a beautiful, silent figure hiding under the bedclothes. And that is what they will find. If they do not come in ten minutes, I will climb out of the window and join you. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't fall asleep. Leave me alone. I am very ill. Right, mademoiselle. Ready, monsieur. Time you come too late. I'm dying. I have brought you something from Citizen Chauvelin. got his daughter back again. And he's got his ducats. Yes. The draft for the usual amount should just about pay for a young lady's expenses in her first coming out season in London. Yes. That's an extraordinary thing, Andrew, but I don't feel at all well. My dear fellow, well. Yeah. You sure it's not there? No. There. I say. It must be your, your soft, bovine, fatuous nature asserting itself again. All imagination. All imagination. 